Hi, welcome to this preview video for Life of the Amazonia. This is a brand new game over here hitting Kickstarter. Actually, it's currently on Kickstarter. I'm going to put a link in the description of this video for the campaign where you can find more information for yourself. A brand new game about uh, life in the rainforest of uh, Amazonia. This is a brand new game that uh, really hits uh, excels in uh, various areas. Among them are the nice mechanisms and the easy rule set, but also the extremely, extremely satisfying back building uh, main mechanism that it has. Players assume the roles of uh, uh, various uh, uh, conservation organizations that are trying to sustain life, to, to help uh, life flourish in uh, parts of uh, the Amazon River and the rainforest and trying to build up the jungle. So each player is developing their own jungle. Uh, they're going to end up with a very nice 3D, cool looking uh, jungle in front of them, which will consist of different uh, uh, terrain tiles of uh, rivers, forests and wetlands, all of them bearing uh, different life forms in terms of uh, uh, trees or aquatic flowers, but among all, uh, mainly uh, different animal maples. Uh, the game is really, really uh, fast paced and very, very well designed, in my opinion at least. Uh, it uses a very central back building mechanism, uh, which I love, I love back building games. Uh, so you simply have uh, some uh, resource tokens in your bag, you're pulling cheats out, uh, five at a time, and you can try to upgrade your resources to more powerful ones with higher denominations so that you can do better and bigger actions. And there is a variety of uh, nine different actions you can choose, but they're very simple, so everything makes sense after a couple of turns. You can either expand your jungle, you can either populate it with more animals, trying to make sure to fit the pattern and the um, uh, requirements both for placement of these uh, life forms of these uh, animals or, uh, of, or trees or uh, aquatic flowers, but in a way that it uh, delivers you victory points, environmental points, as they say it in the game. If you like pattern building games, style placement games, back building as a mechanism, and fast paced games with a very, very uh, uh, different, diverse and versatile, at the same time, gameplay, uh, I think you should look no further. I really enjoyed this one and I'm really, really supporting it because I highly believe that it's a, a great game with uh, awesome mechanics, very, very well blended, very, very well tested. I, I've uh, tried myself from the end uh, use of them and I'm really enjoying it. And it also has tremendous amount of replayability. The reason for that, you have eight different um, uh, base animals that you use in each game, but each of them comes with four different decks. So you have essentially four different sets with giving you different options for scoring the different animals. There are already eight different animals, so you can make the math, but also you have unique animals that you place only uh, for each person, uh, each player has uh, their own unique animal that they can place with their own scoring opportunities. On top of that, you get victory points from uh, the different tracks if you've placed a lot of uh, trees or aquatic flowers, from uh, nature cards and specifically scenery cards that award uh, specific uh, victory points according to the requirements. You gain victory points according to all different aspects in the game, but uh, above all, this is, uh, I think it boils down to the fact that this is a highly enjoyable, highly satisfying, a very, very robust, uh, sleek design that delivers an ex extremely, extremely satisfying gaming experience. I highly recommend and I really enjoy it. Uh, and along the way, you construct your jungle. Do I need to say more? I mean, the, the effect and the look on the table of this 3D constructed a uh, little portion of the rainforest with uh, the different animal maples and the different trees and the rivers, the rivers and the forests and the wetlands uh, really makes you uh, happy and put a smile on your face because at the end of the, of the day uh, you manage to construct something and it's in front of your eyes when you finish playing the game. So extremely well done, highly replayable, lots of value, also with a solo mode. Join me at the table, I'll show you how the game plays and I'll explain everything, so you need to worry not at all about rules. I will explain, replace with this video the rulebook essentially. I'm going to also add timestamps in the description of the video for quick access to specific sections and chapters of um, uh, the video and the rules as I explain them. And I'm going to come back at the end of this video for a final wrap up about why do I think this game deserves not only to be published, but a space and uh, uh, an area uh, in, in every library and in every gamer's uh, library and collection, essentially, because it's a great, great design and I'm really, really uh, enjoying it and supporting it and recommending it to, to all. So join me at the table, I'll show you how the game plays.
Welcome to Amazon. The Amazon rainforest makes up more than half of Earth's rainforest and produces more than 20% of our planet's oxygen. Yeah, 20% of our planet's oxygen. It is also mother to the wild and home to more than 10% of Earth's flora and fauna. To further enrich our precious Amazon, the world's largest and most prestigious non-profit scientific organization, the Good Comet Society, has gathered you into the lush jungles of the Amazon rainforest. Be prepared to run your own conservation organization to make the jungles of the Amazon flourish. Restore the rainforest, plant trees and aquatic flowers to help the environment thrive. Depending on your choices, your jungle can be a symbiosis where various animals can live in harmony or it may become a nest for specific species to thrive. Succeed in cultivating the most prosperous jungle and be rewarded the Good Comets Association's grand prize. Now, let's get to work. Now, this is a life of Amazonia. Before moving into explaining how the game plays, let me uh, quickly introduce all the components, by the way, how cool is this cover? Let me introduce all the components of the game to you so that we have a good understanding on what we see in front of us. You have various animals that you see here sorted out on the left. Uh, you can find five jaguars, uh, five otters, six macaws, six caimans, 12 woodpeckers, 12 tree frogs, 20 tamarins, eight toucan, one anteater, one dolphin, one anaconda, one Watskin, one sloth, one turtle, one iguana, the ones that I have just mentioned and one uh, armad uh, armadillo are the special uh, uh, unique animals that you only have one of those and these are the basic uh, animals that I just mentioned before you see here. You also have uh, 16 player markers for the different tracks one two three and one four for each of the four player colors. You have various uh, tokens you have in uh, denominations of uh, two three and four leaf tokens that you see here in those vaults. You also have a currency tokens in dominations of 2, 3 and 4 that you see here as well. And then you have also water uh, tokens that you see in denominations of 2, 3 and 4 as well in this vault token and fruit tokens of 2, 3 and 4 in this uh, section of this vault. These vaults, by the way, have a cap so you can securely save them and, travel and um, store them in the box without me, uh, them being messed around. You also have denominations of 1 for uh, various of uh, for the same of those tokens, but these are only used for uh, initially prepare, uh, preparing your bag because it's a bag builder uh, and uh, instead of a deck builder, it's a bag builder and it's a really cool one, by the way. So um, the dominations of one for uh, currency, leaf, and water, but uh, you also have one token of uh, two fruit in order to start. You don't get any uh, one values in the game to buy because these are your starting, which are the least. Uh, powerful and you need to get rid of them and get higher value denominations of those later on this uh, soon. We also have 36 uh, terrain tiles here on this stack and it's a quite big stack as you can see. There are a lot of terrain tiles and uh, they offer a lot of uh, replayability in the game because uh, no, no jungle will be ever the same uh, throughout uh, our games. By the way, again, keep in mind that this is a prototype. Uh, even though it looks gorgeous, it still is a prototype uh, game. So. Uh, there may be some changes. Uh, currently, you can find information on how to uh, uh, fund this game because it's running on Kickstarter. I'm going to put the link to the description of this video uh, later on. You also have uh, four discard boats. This is where your tokens uh, end up as a discard in a boat of your color. You see the edge of the boat has the player's color. It's a nice way to drop discard your tiles here once uh, you're finished of course this will end up back into your bag uh, at the end of uh, your bags and uh, when your bag is uh, empty and you're going to replenish them uh, then you also have the waterfall of life which uh, um, keeps the four tracks one two three and one here four and there is also the bonus uh, reminder over there which is a 3D. You see it from the top of the screen, you'll see it later when I change angle from this video. It looks really, really cool and gives a very nice perspective. All the components uh, also have a very 3D nice feel because when you start building on these uh, uh, jungle spaces, trees, they're going to look lovely together with the animals that you're going to place on your jungle. Okay. 
You also have um, two Automa cards, you see here, for the solo mode. You have 69 nature cards, which come in three different categories. One, two, and one, three. We're going to explain them later on. A score pad. Uh, you have a, um, eight unique uh, animal cards. Uh, they have a, a really nice and beautiful art, as you see. But these uh, only... Uh, you only get one of those. Each, pair, each player chooses one out of the ones that have been dealt, and they only have one of their unique animals uh, when they start the game. Uh, and there is an option for up to eight, so even more than the number of players. Uh, these are the common animals that you're going to use in your uh, jungle. You also have a play rate, uh, which uh, really summarizes uh, different nine type of actions. Don't be afraid. There are nine type of actions, but they're very simple to follow. And the bonuses that you get awarded on various spaces, like the waterfall, uh, progression tracks or uh, the actual terrain tiles themselves, etc. So, these are the components of the game. Of course, you also have the, the base uh, animal cards. They're 16, but they're double-sided. They have... let me show you. This is a set C. Uh, you have eight animals, and they have... each animal has two cards, which is double-sided. That means they have the set A, the set B, the set C, and the set D. That means that you get really, really a lot of value with this game because they score differently and uh, you're going to be using one card for each of the different eight uh, basic um, uh, animals in the jungle. So really a lot of value. You have the woodpeckers, the tree frogs, uh, the tamarins, two cans, a cow, caiman, giant otter, and uh, jaguar, which are uh, uh, the jaguar, which is... Uh, a lot of value for the game in my opinion as well and I really enjoy having a lot of uh, different possibilities to uh, play the game. So there you have it, these are all the components of the game. Now let's move to the introduction and the game setup. First we play the Waterfall of Life where it is visible to all players. It's a 3D construction, you, uh, you have to make some preparation to set it but it's very easy to set and this is where you put it. Uh, you lay out the Animal Refuge so it's uh, available and visible to all players. Essentially, the Animal Refuge referred in the rulebook is the eight cards of the chosen set with the respective animal tokens. You're going to use a specific number of tokens. I've placed all of them here, but depending on the number of players, uh, you're going to use a specific number of uh, tokens so that the game is balanced. You have uh, the base animal card, which is on the left for each of the animals, and the animal uh, meeples on the right. So... Um, each card has, comes with its own uh, uh, different information, but you can mix and match the, also the, to make your own sets. So for the base animal card, you choose an animal set and play among the four animal sets, A, B, C and D that I've showed you. You can uh, find the set type in the lower right hand corner of the base animal cards. Again, this is a C card. And it shows that you need the animal meeples that they are needed for woodpecker are three times the number of players. So in a four player game, you need uh, 12 of those, which is exactly the full amount, as you can see. Then uh, once you have selected, uh, you place uh, these eight base cards of your selected set where all players can see them. You put the remaining base animal cards back into the box because they're not going to be used for this game. Uh, if you're new to this game, it's recommended that you start with the A set and then you can progress to B, C and D. But you can also, if you want, try creating combinations. There are more than 60,000 combinations if you make your own set by selecting one card uh, from the four different sets and making your own set. But keep in mind that, uh, of course, you cannot imagine and expect that 60,000 combinations were all checked from the designer. So the game may go in a different direction. But again, having four sets already, it's tremendous uh, value and a lot of replayability, in my opinion. Then the animal meeples, depending on the quantity written on the lower right hand of the card, again, here, if I was playing with uh, woodpeckers from deck C, I would need to, uh, to use three times uh, the number of players, so in a two-player game it will be six of those. The rest will be returned into the box. You do the same for each of the cards, you can find the information either in the rulebook or by visiting, of course, uh, the lower bottom card of your selected card from the selected set that you're playing. Uh, for the purpose of demonstration here, I'm going to refer and demonstrate a full uh, four-player game, so I'm going to use everything as you see already. But there is a table also with the player count and the number of meeple animal tokens that you use in the rulebook uh, for easy access. You place two token vaults within the reach of players. These are these tokens, 
and uh, they have uh, the different tokens as you see you have a, a, a fruit on the left denominations 4 3 and 2 you have water on the right denominations 4 3 and 2 below you can see the cost for you to buy them and enrich your uh, bag with bag building and the second vault has leaf on the left denominations 4 3 and 2 again and the respective values to purchase them below and currency uh, the benefit of having those higher value tokens is that you get a chance when you pull tokens from your bag uh, each round we pull five to pull something with a higher value and that means that you're going to be able to have more productive round of course you arrange the terrain tiles uh, uh, as such so you have uh, the terrain tile deck uh, aside from the starting tiles which have this at the back and you select one uh, for each of the players participating so let's say this is me playing so i would have one here in front of me each player will going to have one of those starting ones with a tent uh, next to them and the remaining ones form the terrain tile deck you put them face down like that and then uh, you draw three terrain tiles from the terrain tile deck and place them face up so that you have an offer of three for each uh, moment in the game then you place the worker tokens which are these and essentially they, they can uh, give you flexibility in the game you have a, wor a worker art uh, depicted on them you place uh, the trees I have some here but these are really nice 3D uh, great looking trees that you're going to put on your jungle spaces then you have the aquatic flowers and you have also Special terrain tiles, which essentially again are the three different terrain tiles that you have in those uh, basic uh, terrain tiles, but uh, they give you the opportunity to change the terrain tile by placing them on top or expanding next to the ones that they originally uh, they are already there. Uh, last but not least, we have five complete tokens. These are used because the game is triggered to end when uh, uh, we use all the respective tokens by placing them in a jungle. So we put one complete, one complete, and when we do this five times, then um, each uh, other player is going to get one round and the game will end so this is the purpose of these tokens and we keep them close by for when reaching closer to the end of the game and start completing um, cards then we set up the nature cards we have the nature card the deck or scenery cards depending on how the final uh, keyword is going to be used but the uh, nature or scenery cards are these cards here they have this back uh, I open and I display uh, draw six cards from the nature deck and place them face up and leave some space next to it for discard pile uh, of course uh, these are three different types and you can see one two three different icons I'm going to explain them later on but this is a display that uh, we're going to have each player prepares their own space uh, in front of them following this, uh, the same instructions so we get the starting terrain okay again I'm uh, having this terrain in front of me the standing terrain, uh, if we're playing less than uh, uh, four player games, the remaining starting terrains are returned back into the box. Then we sort out our resource bag and each player chooses a color, take the respective color bag together with their respective discard boat, which has the same border around the top of the discard. Ignore this, these are empty at the beginning of the game. So uh, you, uh, each player chooses a color, takes a resource bag and places it in front of them and all players start the game with 10 resource tokens, as you see here. We have 5 currency 1 value, 2 uh, currency um, leaf uh, value 1, 2 water value 1 and 1 fruit of uh, denomination of 2, uh, up, uh, making the full number of tokens that I'm going to take them. Every player does the same. and place them in my bag I can always look at the contents of my bag to make sure to see what I have but uh, I cannot do that when I'm drawing in order to fill in and draw five then I need to do it blindly uh, then the next thing that we do is uh, we have the discard boat where we're going to be placing uh, the tokens that we will use in the course of the game next by and we have the four player markers we place the four player markers that are the same color as the resource bag on the left first most uh, space on each of the four tracks we have the tracks here one track is this one the second one the third one and the fourth one we place them there 
And then uh, we have the unique animal meeples. We take the animal meeple that uh, corresponds to the selected uh, um, unique animal meeple and place it on uh, next to the card because potentially we can place it in our jungle. How we get to choose those? We deal two of those. This is the deck of the unique animals and these are the tokens plus this one, the dolphin for me. Uh, I get two, two of those. I check them, I decide to keep one of them and I discard the, car the other card and then I take the matching uh, animal meeple from the general stock. The remaining animal meeples that are not chosen, of course, are not going to be used in the course of the game. The player who most recently watched a nature documentary becomes the first player and the game proceeds in a clockwise direction starting with the first player. All players, excluding the first player, collect one worker token from the supply, one of these, except from the first player. And uh, all players, uh, each player draws five resource tokens from the resource uh, bag. So I don't, uh, I cannot see what I'm drawing. One, two, three, four, five. So this is uh, uh, what I'm starting with. I put it in front of me. This is my play area. This is my draw bag from where I'm drawing. And this is my discard when I'm discarding. I, I can keep a certain number of tokens between rounds. I start with one, I can only pick one, but I can increase it all the way up to three. If I have more than that that I didn't use or I didn't choose to use, I need to discard them. Now I'm going to move this a bit higher. So draw bag, play area, and then discard. And this is where I have my jungle in front of me. So this area is going to be unique for each player and they're going to have it in front of them respectively. We are now ready to begin. An overview. So, the goal of the game. The goal of life of the Amazonia is to be the player with the highest environmental score at the end of the game, which is represented by the star icon through the course of the game, and at the end of the game you will be tallying your score using this score pad to get all the environmental points from the different sources that reward you uh, at the end of the game. So, jungle building. To achieve high environmental score, you need to create the most ecologically rich jungle. In order to do this, you will need to place various animals in your jungle. Since each animal has its, its own unique scoring mechanism, it is important to place animals where they can best synergize with each other, also with the environment, in order in also to uh, make pairs, for example, or specific patterns with trees, aquatic flowers, along the rest, so that you will acquire the most uh, output out of uh, victory points being awarded. Also, there needs to be uh, what needs to be taken under consideration in regards to these are the nature cards, which also give different uh, number of environmental points based on how you have placed animals and elements, life in general, in your jungle. Back building. In order to restore the Amazon to become the most ecologically rich jungle, it is very important for players to develop the resource bag to fit their strategy. Players will need to pay resource tokens to perform all the different actions to restore the Amazon. And those resource tokens are stored, of course, in their respective resource bags, belonging to the players. Players start the game with a relatively weak resource bag that gradually develops into a stronger one as the players slowly but steadily purchase more uh, resource tokens and this way they grow their bags over time. So, simple as that, if uh, you manage to develop your bag by adding higher value resource tokens and potentially also discarding a basic starting low value ones, there's a high probability when you draw, you draw those higher ones out of the bag or eventually they will come up in your play area anyway and then you'll be able to make more boosted enhanced uh, purchases and play the actions that really want high number of uh, values in terms of resource tokens. Game structure. Players take turns in a clockwise direction until the end of the game, conditions are met. Each turn consists of an action phase and a cleanup phase. First of all, we have the action phase, where you simply pay the needed amount of resource tokens to perform the desired actions. There is a total of 9 actions that uh, can be performed in the action phase, and there is a very good um, summary of all of those right here in those player rates, where you can see all the different types of actions. They may seem a lot, but they're very easy to follow and remember, but also this reminder helps a lot. So you can either purchase a resource token, uh, make area restoration, place animal, place tree, place aquatic flowers, obtain nature card, use plant card, expand storage or purchase bonus. They're all described here and I'm pausing for a sec for you to have a quick look. 
after the action phase, when the player have finished paying for their actions uh, from the resources that they pulled from their action bag, from the resource bag, and they're available, uh, they move to the cleanup phase. For the cleanup phase, resource tokens left unused during the action phase can be saved in the play area or discarded in the discard pile. And after this, five new resource tokens are drawn from the resource bag into play area in preparation for the next round. So, okay, let's put those aside. And let's say we used some of those or doing different things, hopefully all of them. Whatever we are left, we can store if we are according to our limit. At the moment, we start with one, we can store only one, so like we can store one, and the rest we have to discard. And then we use our resource bag to draw five more, in addition to what we have stored, and add them to our uh, area for preparation for the next turn, so we're ready to play. And we can also organize, because we see this way, what uh, resources we're going to have, so we can think about our plans while other players are playing. So, let's say we have a four, uh, three player game, uh, player A, player B and player C. We start with player A's turn, he does his action phase and then his cleanup phase, then we move to player B, he does his action phase and then his cleanup phase, and then we move to player C, he does his action phase and his cleanup phase, and then we repeat. When all five base animal cards, uh, when five of them have been depleted, and you'll see that because you have used all of their tokens by placing them in the jungle, and all these five out of uh, these tokens will have the complete token on them, that means they have no tokens here because they are in the jungle, then uh, that means that uh, we are moving to the end. The remaining player, the, the player who triggered uh, this will get 10 environmental points, and then uh, all remaining players, excluding the player who depleted this one, uh, will take one last uh, turn. Then the game ends. Each player will count their environmental score that they collected, and we'll make an example later on, and the one with the highest score will be the winner of the game. Again, just to show you, this is a jungle in front of a player. Each player, they're going to have their own jungle in front of them, which is completely owned by the player, and they will be scoring their own jungles. So this is not a common one, just to keep that uh, in mind. Now, gameplay. Let's move to the action phase. In the action phase, players use resource tokens to perform as we said desired actions. As long as the player can pay with uh, resource tokens, they can continue taking any desired actions. They can take as many actions, one after the other, as needed, even if that means that repeating the same action. So I can do two times the same or three times the same action, as long as I can pay for it. To perform an action, players pay the, by discarding the resource tokens from their play area, the area in the middle, so I, I use this card for my special... Um, a uh, unique animal to uh, keep it here for perspective, but keep in mind that you may have it on the side. In front of you is going to be your play area, what you have drawn, typically five plus up to three more, depending on your storage capabilities from your bag. This is your draw bag and this is your discard pile. Once your draw bag is depleted, you'll have to take all those from here, put them there, and then keep drawing uh, as well. Also, when you acquire new resource tokens by buy them, which is one of the actions I'm going to explain later on, when you take a resource token, you put it in the discard pile. So when you empty it, they will go back there and potentially they're going to be redrawn soon, so they give you more possibilities. So, couple of keywords. Resource bag is this bag here, a pouch that stores resource tokens. Play area is the area in front of us where we keep our uh, active uh, resource tokens that we're going to use for the desired actions. Discard pile, when the resource tokens from the player are spent, they moved on the discard pile, which is this nice board over here, the 3D board. When uh, there are no more tokens left into the draw bag, uh, new tokens need to be drawn. The resource tokens from the discard pile are returned to the bag, shuffled, given a good shuffle, and then uh, you can uh, keep drawing up to what you have to draw, uh, which is called essentially a bag reset. There are five rules regarding actions, simple rules. First of all, the player can use multiple resources to perform an action. Second of all, if a player pays for more resource tokens than the desired action, the excess is not refunded. Remaining resources are uh, left uh, discarded. So you don't take change, essentially. Third, whenever a player uses one token or multiple, only one type of action can be performed with a single payment. Players cannot perform separate, cannot split actually the amount of a single resource token into performing more than one type of action. 
That means if I have action type A and action type B, if I want to perform two, I cannot use, for example, this and spend two of uh, the leaf resources for doing one action and two of the leaf resources doing the other action. But I can do two times A action by paying two plus two from the same resource token. This is what it means. Fourth, when repeatedly performing the same action multiple times with a single payment, the actions can only be performed after paying the cost for actions in full. And five, when paying for the cost of an action, any two resources can take place of any one resource. So, let's say I needed three leaf tokens and I only have two. Okay, I can use two of those to make them for one leaf. So I have two plus one, this way I can pay for three leaf. The value shown on the two resources uh, being traded does not matter. And there is uh, no limit to the number of times this uh, can be done in forms of payment. Okay, and all of those will be thrown into my discard pile and then that means I provided four leaf, uh, uh, sorry, three leaf, two actual leaves and two uh, resources coins made as one leaf in, in its place to make an action cost uh, of three leaves. Again, there are nine type of actions. So let's start seeing a couple of words for each of uh, those ones. First of all, purchase resource tokens. You purchase a resource token from the token vault and then place the purchase token in the discard pile. Simple as that. I use uh, the resource that I have in front of me, okay, in order to buy high, higher level of resource tokens. Developing your resource bag is essential. So players need to develop a resource bag by purchasing more effective tokens in order to restore the jungle more efficiently. First, for the payment, you pay the directed amount of resources and gain the desired resource token from the token vault. The amount of uh, uh, resources, essentially, coins you need to pay for each of those are depicted, as you see, in front of each compartment, indicating how much, for example, a 4 lever token costs 9 uh, gold tokens, coin tokens. Uh, if there are no more tokens left into the vault chosen, this action cannot be used for this specific denomination, so you cannot purchase this one if, for some reason, value 4 leaves are depleted. You place a newly purchased resource token into the discard pile, into your boat, for future use, and as the game progresses and the players reset their resource bags, the newly purchased resource will come into play and they will be used. Second is the area restoration. You move the player marker on the restoration track, you choose a terrain tile from the jungle, we have always three in front of us from the market, uh, and then you place it, you connect it to your own jungle, at least by two hexes meaning two hexes of uh, the new tile should touch your existing uh, jungle. If it's your, uh, you only have your starting tile there, it's, they should start spreading from your starting tile. So, you see here this track, that means that in order to do that, first of all, I need to do the payment. So, I need to move the player marker to the right of the restoration track and pay the different amount each time, where depending on how much I progress. So, every subsequent one may be more expensive down the road as depicted on the track so you focus only on the top track as you see for example if i'm a, let's say the yellow player actually i'm the green why well, change colors now uh, i need to place my first one so let's say i have only my starting tile and i need to place i want to place my first tile to uh, make area restoration to expand my jungle area essentially i move it here on the first lot and I pay one leaf. So I need to discard into my boat one leaf token, a value of one leaf token, or two any others make for one leaf, as always. And then I will take one terrain token, tile token. From the general supply, there are always three. Let's say I take this one. I need to connect it by at least touching two sides. So like that, for example. I can always rotate it any way I want but I cannot make it touch only one side, one hex. At least two hexes need to touch. So I expand this way, uh, starting from my starting tile, I expand and I, I add more area. Uh, the terrain can be rotated in any way I wish. And of course, then I need to draw one new terrain and add it in the display area. So that uh, there are again three available either for me to purchase if I repeat the action or for other players uh, when I finish my turn. 
Let's focus for a set on the water for a second on the waterfall of life, which has the three tracks. And here for this action, we use the top one, the top track, which is the restoration track. Here below, this is the tree track for another action. And here is the aquatic flower track. And here also we have uh, the storage capabilities. And there is also a bonus reminder here. But for the moment, for this action, we're interested in this track here. In order to move the player marker on the right, players must uh, have the direct amount of uh, payment. So in this case, I needed to. Uh, discard one leaf. If I was here and uh, have, I wanted to place my first, second, third re uh, restoration tile and expand my jungle, I need to pay uh, two leaves to do that. And again, if I moved here, I would need to pay three because the region here costs three. Now you see that there are also some uh, different uh, icons there. There is uh, the track bonus and the limited track bonus. Uh, for the track bonus, all players who pass their player markers in their corresponding space receive the bonus. So this is uh, for sure something important because here I would get that bonus, here I would get that bonus, I will explain bonuses later. But also keep in mind that uh, during the course of the game, players can be on the same spot with no problem. Everyone, as soon as they reach the corresponding bonus on the bonus uh, track on the line, they will receive it. There is also the limited track bonus, but for this let's focus here on the aquatic flower, for example. When uh, people, players move on this track, again, they will receive the different bonuses on the bottom. But there are some limited bonuses that they are in the middle of the location, like this one, and they have some sparkle around it. So the first player to reach here, they will take the bonus in the sparkle area. The next player to reach here, they will not take it. When the game ends, the tree track and the aquatic flower provide environmental points depending on the position of the player marker. So it's important to go really high on uh, the tree track and on the aquatic track, tree track, aquatic track, aquatic flower, because you will get as much, as many victory points as you see where your marker has finished during the end of the game. Uh, the restoration track does not give victory points at the end. Of course, if uh, there are no more spaces to the right, this action can no longer be performed. Now, a word about terrain tile terms. So, let's say we expanded uh, our uh, jungle by adding this terrain. Uh, first of all, we have a hex. A terrain tile is made up of seven hexes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They make up a hex, um, a terrain tile. Each hex can only hold one life, so two lives cannot be placed on the same hex. That means that I cannot have two to count, for example, on the same hex. They can be on separate ones, according to their placement rules, but not on the same one. And this is valid for all lives. And a life is considered not only an animal, but also a tree or an aquatic flower. Uh, there are three types of terrains. You have forest, with the green. You have river, with the blue and you have wetland with uh, the yellow, brown. There are placement bonus. So terrain tiles contain hexes with tile placement bonus, with a um, placement bonus. That means that if you place a life on a hex with a placement bonus, in this newly added tile, it's this one and that one, you will get the respective uh, bonus, this one or that one. If you place a life, that means again, a token covering that bonus. Not when you place the tile itself, when you place a life on the hex of the token that uh, contains the placement bonuses. A habitat. A habitat is a group of adjacent hexes of the same terrain type. The habitats are divided into forest, river and wetland, depending on the terrain. And when counting the size of a habitat, count the numbers of hexes that make up the habitat. Single hex habitats are possible. For example, this is a single hex jungle habitat or a single hex river habitat. But this extended one of wetland goes all the way from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hexes. They are continuous. And this one with 2 is a separate one. This is also a separate habitat of wetland, and this is a single habitat of wetland. So you get to see how habitats work. Animals' habitats refer to the habitats of the animals where they are placed. One hex small animals inhabit one habitat, and two hex large animals can inhabit one or two habitats. Here, for example, you see this woodpecker only inhabits one hex, but it's sharing a habitat with uh, other uh, players of the same type. But, for example, 
let's say, this frog can sit here, it's a small animal and it can sit on one hex habitat, according to their placement rules always, while this one can sit on one or two. Another action is to place an animal, it's the third option, so retrieve an animal from the animal refuge, the cards and the areas next to it where you have the animal tokens, and place the animal in unoccupied hexes that matches the animal's terrain conditions. So, uh, let's focus here, for example, on this uh, toucan. You have various aspects on the animal card. You have, uh, first of all, uh, the chosen animal from the base animal of the unique animal, which shows a unique uh, uh, card, which shows which animal you're selecting. We have eight types of animals in the animal refuge, and all players are able to place these animals. Unique animals are only be available to the player owning the card. So this dolphin, for example, is only available for me to place, but the eight ones on this column uh, are available for all players to place. You need to do the payment, and the payment is depicted here on the bottom right of the card. So for this Jaguar, I need to pay nine food tokens, or for this uh, Tucan, I need to pay five food tokens and two water tokens. Not tokens, resources. They can be in any... I can pay, for example, three tokens plus two tokens of food and a two and a single token of two. So it's up to me according to the rules I explained before. But the resources I need to expend are always depicted on the bottom left of the card. Another important thing you to see is here is the name of the card. Here is a, of the, the animal, sorry. Here you see the requirements that they have for placement rules. You take the corresponding animal meeple and you place it on a, a appropriate location on your jungle. You have to respect the terrain conditions mentioned here or here and I'm going to explain them in a bit. And of course, uh, this will be done only after you have paid the resources to do so. So, this grey circle means that this can be placed on a single unoccupied um, hex of any of the three types, either forest, either river or wetland. If it was green, that meant it will be on a single unoccupied hex of a um, forest specifically. Uh, for example, this Jaguar has a wetland and uh, a grey one, which stands for any of the three. That means that uh, this needs to be placed on uh, one specific uh, terrain and one terrain of any type. So it should cover two terrains. One would be specifically wetland and the other one can be whatever you want out of the three. Wetland, uh, forest and river, again. And all this differentiate between the eight basic animals. You can have, for example, uh, this one, which is a giant otter, and it shows it has an equal between, so they can be whatever type of terrain you need, you want, but they need to be both the same. So two rivers, two forests, two two uh, wetlands. They need to be exactly the same for placement rules. In some other cards, you have an option. So this tree frog can be placed either on a wetland, single unoccupied, or on a river, single unoccupied. Uh, and there are different requirements for placement but they all make sense in this way. Another thing to note are the classes on the card. You see, next to the title, there is an icon. There are three classes of animals, and these are birds, mammals, and the last one is herptiles, which have this blue icon over here. Herptiles refers to both amphibians and reptiles. We also have animal abilities. All animals have their own way of collecting environmental points at the game's end. So you need to pay close attention to how they score victory points at the end of the game on their card. And again, each set has different options for the same uh, card, but only one tree frog will be used and only one card in each game. Uh, there is a collection of all the, those explanations in detail in the rulebook. And for game setup, the animal set and the quantity of animal meeples needed in the game are, of course, as I mentioned during setup, described here at the bottom right. So this is from set C. And if I'm playing uh, with this version of uh, Tree Frog, I need to include three times the number of players. So for the three player game, three times three, nine Tree Frogs. The remaining Tree Frogs will need to be removed out of the game during setup. So again, to give a full example, uh, for this action, placing an animal, let's say I want to place a, a toucan, I need to pay five food and two water, and I need to uh, place it on a single unoccupied terrain of any type, either forest or uh, river or wetland. Each toucan scores three points, and also upon placement, gain one worker token 
from the supply. So uh, this is a very simple placement. So what I would do next is I would go to my play area, pay the resources, that would be five food plus two water, discard them in my discard area, and then take the Tukan token, and according to the rule placements, uh, this is a simple one, place it for example here, uh, here, on a single unoccupied hex of any type, either forest or river or uh, wetland. This will give me three victory points, environmental points at the end of the game, and upon placement I also gain, according to the card, one worker token and place it next to me. These are different from the resource tokens, they don't go into your bag and you don't have any limit, so you place them nearby and you can use them uh, later as we're going to explain how. The fourth and fifth action are called place a tree or place an aquatic flower and they're going to explain together because they're very similar. For the place tree you move the player marker on the tree track and place the tree on the unoccupied forest terrain hex and for the place an aquatic flower you move the player marker on the aquatic flower track respectively and place the flower on an occupied river terrain hex. So how this works is very simple. Let's say again I'm green, I, need, I want to place a tree, I move my token on the tree track, I need to pay three leaf value, uh, a total of three leaf value from my play area. Uh, I also get the bonus since I reached this area. And then I'm able to place one tree token by taking one from the general supply on a forest hex in one unoccupied forest hex of my jungle, something like that. Could be here, could be here, could be here, if that was my jungle. Respectively, for the aquatic flower, I move my token here. Again, I have to pay the respective resources or get any bonuses, whatever, like mentioned before. And then I take from the general supply one aquatic flower and I place it on a, a river hex because these go on river, where the trees go on forest. Action type C, uh, six, obtain a nature card. So simply uh, you purchase a nature card or a scenery card, how it's called, from the area in the common market. Players can have up to five natural cards in total. Uh, insect cards effects are applied immediately when the insect card is discarded and the other ones are uh, kept for uh, either in use in game or in game scoring etc so let's see this is uh, uh, the, these are the cards there are six according to setup rules always face up and these are uh, uh, this action is again very simple uh, first of all we have to pay the cost by spending from our play area the respective cost they cost water as you see this costs two water eight water six water etc once i pay the cost from my play area I obtain the nature card and keep it next to me, in front of me. So uh, players can have up to five nature cards. And if a player has to reach uh, their limit, uh, they need to discard one in order to get a new card. Then once you've taken a card, you fill it in with uh, another one. So you always have six in the display. There are uh, three different types of cards and they're depicted here. We have, first of all, the, in the banner, the name. But also you have a color coded and a symbol code. code. So these symbols are the scenery cards, these are called scenery essentially, all of them are nature cards, these are scenery cards, these with a flower are called plant cards, and these with the insect are called insect cards. So let's see one word for each of those, for the scenery cards like this one or that one, additional environmental points can be obtained after the game concludes, so at the end of the game you get one point per this uh, type of uh, animal. Uh, and again, all these uh, cards are explained in the back of the rulebook. Uh, plant cards uh, have various effects from these cards. They last from one from uh, one time, from the time of the acquisition of the card all the way till the game ends. So this is an ability essentially with this icon. So for uh, this one, if you place uh, a bird, you gain one worker token once per turn. So this is cool because you have this ongoing ability. And last but not least, you have the insect cards. These are one-time cards, so you don't keep them. Uh, once you paid the, the cost, 
uh, you take the benefit and then you discard them so they don't take up uh, space into your five limit. You place a large animal of your choice in your jungle. So this is really cool because it gives you flexibility. But then you discard the card. And again, coming back to this, uh, this gives you one victory point per, per, per animal. This is an icon for all animals. So for every animal placed in your jungle, you gain one uh, environmental point. So this is uh, good in order to start getting a lot of animal tokens on your jungle. So there you have it. These are uh, the abilities of nature cards. Again, they're all called nature cards. These are insect cards, these are scenery cards, and these are plant cards. And uh, the limit is five, and all the abilities are explained in the rulebook. A seventh option is uh, to use a plant card. Some plant cards require payment from your play area with the resource tokens, discarding them in order to use a card, in order to use their ability. So for example, this card, it's a plant card, if you have it in front of you, you can use it. You have to obtain it with uh, the action of obtaining it, as I explained before. But once you have it in front of you, in order for you to use it, in order for you to uh, get the benefit, you need to pay three coin resources and you can do it once per turn. So this is considered an action and it uh, consumes resource tokens from in front of your play area. Eighth option for an action is to expand storage. You move the player marker on the storage track. It increases the number of resource tokens that can be stored in play area during the cleanup phase. So we can only st we start with one because all players start here. So you can only keep one. But if you pay, for example, two, I will move it here. I will get this benefit as shown. Uh, and I can store, I need to pay two uh, water, token, uh, water resources in order to make the upgrade of my storage. And now my limit is two. That means that I can keep two uh, between uh, rounds. So essentially, uh, this action increases the number of resource tokens that can be stored on your play area during the cleanup phase. The number does not matter, just uh, the amount of resource tokens. By expanding your storage, you can reduce your wasted resource tokens and utilize your resource more efficiently. You have the payment you pay so that you can increase your storage. And then uh, below uh, shows the number of how many tokens you can have in addition to the five ones that you're going to uh, uh, draw from your bag after you do your cleanup phase. So this is not up to, this is plus the five ones that you're going to draw. Ninth action, last but not least, is to purchase a bonus. You purchase a bonus by paying the allocation cost and the cost can be found in the middle floor of the waterfall of life. That area is just about here. So you see you can uh, pay the cost to get these bonuses. I'm not going to cover the icons here because I'm going to explain them just uh, now uh, because you see them also in different areas like tracks or uh, uh, tiles etc. But for example, just to give you an example here, and I give two random resource tokens to purchase a draw bonus. And as long as I can pay with the respective cost, I can take as many bonus, bonuses as I want. Speaking of bonuses, as the game progresses, players will receive a number of bonuses that will assist in a smoother jungle restoration process. Bonuses can be earned through placement bonuses, track bonuses, limited track bonuses, purchase bonus actions and nature cards. Bonuses are only received after the full cost of the action that generates the bonus has been paid. If multiple bonuses are to be collected with a single action, the player decides the order. Players cannot choose to receive the bonus at a later time and players can choose not to receive the bonus at all if they wish, but they lose it. So let's see uh, the different types of bonus by icons. Again, you can find them on different areas like your uh, uh, the waterfall of life tracks or your tile placements. Essentially, they are the same icons, but they are spread all around the game. So let's focus on the icons themselves. You have the relocate which is this icon. Uh, you choose a life in the jungle and move it to a different location. Relocate leaves a life that can only be moved to spaces that meet their terrain conditions. And terrain tiles and special terrain tiles cannot be uh, relocated, even though the life is moved to a hex with a placement bonus. The placement bonus cannot be obtained through the relocation. You also have the trash, which is really, really important. Uh, Trust gives you the option to choose a resource token either from your discard pile or from your play area and immediately remove it from the game. This resource token is returned to the token vault if it's a uh, value other than one because value one tokens are returned back in, uh, into the box and not going to be used again since they cannot be bought. By doing so, this ensures that unwanted resource tokens are no longer drawn from the resource bag and resource tokens in the resource bag cannot be trashed. So you can only trash resources from your play area or your discard 
pile in your boat. Essentially, this makes your bug more efficient and more powerful because all the weak tokens will be out. Then we have the next bonus, which is this one. Uh, simply place a special terrain tile. Players can take a special terrain tile of their choosing from the supply and place it immediately. And the special terrain tile can either go on top of existing hex to cover it and convert it to something else, or next to a terrain tile to expand the jungle. And special terrain tile can also be placed to expand the jungle without having to overlap an existing hex. In this case, it must be adjacent to an existing tile, touching at least two other hexes. Uh, let me show you how these look like. These are these hexes. They can either be, again, river or wetland or forest, and they give a lot of flexibility because then you can start doing specific patterns for your jungle. Another bonus is the draw bonus. We've seen it also on the bonus track. Uh, draw a resource token from the resource bag and add it to your play area. Of course, this gives you more options because you have more things available for you to pay for other actions. Then it's this one. You gain a worker. Uh, obtain a worker token from the supply. Worker tokens can be uh, used when paying for an action. A player can pay a worker token uh, instead of a resource with a, uh, with a value of one. Worker tokens are one-time use. After it has been used, the worker token is put back into the supply, so not on the discard pile. And worker tokens are not resource tokens, so therefore you don't, you're not limited and they don't count your, your limit. Uh, they have a specific limit on their own. You can have up to five worker tokens. And if a player has uh, five worker tokens and gain another, they just don't get the award. A player is allowed to, to use more than one worker token per payment. So if I need to pay, for example, with uh, free food and I don't have any food, but I have three tokens of those, I can spend those three tokens instead of paying three food. Another bonus is the Renew Nature Cards. You choose up to two cards from the Nature Card pool, discard them into the discard pile and fill the pool with drawing an equal amount of new cards from the deck there for your uh, getting uh, more possibilities for you. And there is also the Limited Track bonus. Essentially, this is just something around the other bonuses. It has Sparkle. The player to move to the space with the bonus first will get, as I said, uh, the bonus. Uh, in the four-player game, the first two players to move in that location will get this special bonus. The third and fourth will not get any. So after the action phase, a player goes into the cleanup phase. If a player has no more actions, they would uh, like to perform, or no actions can be performed because they don't cannot pay with uh, those uh, tokens left in front of them. And they move to the cleanup phase. First, you store any unused token tokens you have in your play area. They go into your discard pile, essentially your boat. If all tokens in the play area are not used or cannot be used in the action phase, players are able to store tokens up to the number of mark into the storage track here. So this number starts from one, but it can go all the way up to three. In the play, if the player has used all of their tokens in the play area during this action, you just skip it because you don't have anything to store. Then you draw five new resource tokens from your bag and add it into your play area. And uh, keep in mind that if you have upgraded your storage up to three, if you have saved three and you draw five, you can go all the way up to eight, no more. When the cleanup phase has been completed, the next player begins their action, and then uh, we move with the next player. Games end. When five animals have been depleted, meaning their tokens have been placed on the jungles of the different players, and this is indicated again by adding uh, the respective completed, complete uh, tokens on the respective cards, that means that the game ends. The player who depleted the last of the five base animals becomes the final player and receives 10 environmental points. Uh, when the final player turns is over, all players, excluding the final player, take one last turn. After that, the game ends. Each player calculates the environmental score collected, and the player with the highest environmental score wins. In the event of the tie, the player with the most animals placed in the jungle wins, and um, if this proves again another tie, the players share the win. Uh, you can tally your score here, because you see, you, you, depending on the different card, you have different ways of scoring each animal. So you score all of your animals, then you score your nature cards, then you score the track of trees, the track of aquatic uh, flowers, and then you, if you were the first play, the player to finish the game, you get 10 more, and the total gives you the total amount of environmental points. The player with the highest amount is the winner of the game. Again, for calculating your score with the environmental score, uh, this is the sum of your base animals placed on your players 
uh, jungle. Unique animals placed in the player's jungle. This is a unique animal. These are base animals from the base cards. Purchased scenery cards that I may have. These cards are nature cards, but of the uh, category scenery, and they give victory points at the end of the game. Players uh, marker on their tree track and aquatic track, and they get as many victory points as high as they reach with their score trackers. And players also gain 10 points if they are the first ones to finish the fifth um, animal depleted. That means they are scoring uh, 10 additional points. So, I, everything is pretty self-explanatory, the tracks, the cards, etc. So the only thing that I'm going to show you just to get an idea is how you score your jungle depending uh, based on your cards. So, um, for example, you have different, uh, um, let's say, terminology. You can have grouping or you can have community. When you refer to grouping, a grouping is a combination of specific lives placed on a certain formations as indicated by the card. So you can have a grouping of, for example, uh, 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 jaguars. And this would be one, two, but this means that they are placed specifically in this formation as shown on the card itself. The shape of the grouping is important and it has to match what is on the card. The community is uh, different. A community refers to the gathering of adjacently connected lives as indicated on the cards. Unlike groupings, the shape does not matter. So when the card refers to a community, that means that, that they need to be touching each other, but the specific way they touch or the orientation of the shape does not matter. Just that they are next to each other. So in practice, here is how the tree frog scores. It gives uh, one uh, frog, it gives three victory points, environmental points, for a grouping of a tree frog and an aquatic flower. So for this case, I get three victory points from here and three victory points from here for a total of six. And here's an example of community. Each woodpecker scores environmental points based on the number of trees within its community of woodpeckers and trees. Combination. Doesn't matter the, the shape of this, uh, just that they're connected. So. Uh, let's see here, these trees, there are two trees touching with two woodpeckers. This woodpecker is touching one, two trees in its community, so for two trees it will gain two uh, victory points, but also the second woodpecker is touching the same community and you get another two. If there were three or four uh, trees, they would gain uh, with four trees three victory points and they can gain a lot much more uh, environmental points by uh, moving forward. But uh, this is one grouping, and for example, for this, let's say if it was something like that, I would get for four uh, trees, three points for each of the wood peckers, but I could also have a different community with the same conditions and I score it again. So there you have it, this is everything you need to know on how to play uh, Life of the Amazonia. This is a, a great, great game. Life of the Amazonia, I really, really enjoy it. It also includes a very interesting uh, solo mode with a lot of uh, 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 interesting gameplay and a lot of options. Uh, but the, op the rules are described in the rulebook. And now you know anything, everything that's out there about Life of Amazonia. So let's wrap it up. I'm a sucker for pattern building games. Uh, I'm a sucker for tile placing games. And uh, I really like uh, versatile games that they give a lot of uh, replayability through scoring mechanisms and different cards and different way of scoring points, but not uh, making it complex at the same time, because sometimes I really want to play a very, very constructive, thinky game, but not uh, having to worry about remembering a lot of rules, remembering a lot of details, etc. Here the rule set is very, very simple, so this is a plus. The 3D aspect and the aesthetics of the game are amazing. So uh, imagine uh, you've seen in the video just one jungle and just a portion of the jungle, actually not a final one. Imagine having four of them or on the table. How cool this, um, this would look like. Also the 3D Waterfall of Life is amazing with the three tracks. It's really bringing, it, it's unnecessary. I mean, it could have been flat, but it gives a 3D element and <clears throat> makes the game uh, spark even more. Uh, on top of that, the replayability of the game is amazing. And uh, everything is uh, re really around the back building mechanism. I like games uh, like Orleans with back building mechanism. Automobiles is another great game with back building. We've seen it also in uh, Wonderland's War recently. Uh, this is back building DNA. This is back building at its basics, but it works fine, it works excellently, it's simple, fast. The fact that you can also store in between your rounds additional uh, uh, 
uh, resource tokens and you can expand it up to three. This is also important because it gives you more uh, poss possibilities. The fact that you can uh, replace words, um, with other resource tokens, any two, any one missing, it's good. It gives you freedom. Also, worker tokens are really important because they can use as a joker for anything. And all this really helps into boosting, supporting and making you uh, shine and deliver a really nice upgraded portion of the rainforest. So you're feeling good at the end of this game. This is what I'm trying to say. Uh, also, uh, if you like games like Cascadia, which I loved, it's a very, very simple, fantastic game. I think everyone who loved Cascadia will definitely going to love uh, Life in the Amazonia. And I think it's uh, one, one click higher. Uh, it's not that complex. It's, 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 it's fairly easy to get behind. I was uh, detailed in the video. I showed you and explained everything. But the game is simple to get behind. One turn or two turns and then you get uh, to understand everything and uh, really you want to play again and again with different options like I, I did myself. But if you like Cascadia, the mentality of Cascadia, uh, trying to arrange uh, formations of token animals according to specific patterns to be uh, rewarded specific amount of victory points, this idea is implemented here and it's on top of that you have the, um, the back building driving mechanism which is awesome, cool and all the different aspects that really stick together and give and deliver a solid uh, robust uh, gaming experience with amazing looks. So there you have it. I think this is a keeper. This is more than a keeper. Uh, actually this is a great uh, design. All of you who like beautifully looking games uh, with a nice theme. The theme here comes out really really nice. You're actually thinking you're developing a, a portion of the rainforest uh, and you're uh, contributing to to what we should all be contributing as a society and as humans anyway. Uh, but on the table as a gaming experience uh, therefore, you're going to definitely like this, this game and how it delivers this experience, both from theme, but also from a mechanics point of view. The scoring is great, uh, replayability is off the charts with all these options, solo mode is there too. So great design overall, this is two thumbs up for me. I really, really enjoyed it and I highly, highly recommend it. So many thanks for watching. <music>